the number one thing in terms of me losing weight with OMAD and sticking to it is having a routine. Have a routine that works for you. I've thrown out suggestions on when you should be able to exercise or when you should break your OMAD fast. Those are all suggestions to make things easier. But as long as you're doing the same thing day in and day out, it makes it easy. This is what makes, this is the key to losing weight. This is the key to weight loss, period, is make it habitual. Make it the same mundane, boring routine, and it will guarantee you weight loss. Weight loss is boring. There's nothing exciting about it. When you get into the rhythm of it, it's boring. The routine is back and forth, and it's doing the same thing over and over again. I'm like 18 hours into my fast, and the scale didn't move but I'm on my cycle. So I'm doing this live stream to help remind myself for the things that I did to get through this journey. So I have a list here. My top five tips to guarantee weight loss on OMAD. This is exactly what I did that I'm not doing right now. Number one is count your calories. Count your calories. I know I've talked about you can do the 23-1 intermittent fasting method without counting your calories. But honestly, if you want to know if you want to learn weight management, you have to count your calories. It's exactly how I did it. I counted my calories from day one and I stopped counting calories because I got coaching advice to do that just to not stress out about it. But counting calories doesn't stress me out once I'm in a routine. When you are in a routine with calorie counting, it becomes automatic. Like it just becomes automatic. Where calorie counting gets stressful is when you stop calorie counting and you're trying to get back into it and then it's a struggle to get back into it. But once you're in a routine with calorie counting, it's easy. Of course, if you're doing it for years and years and end, throwing in a break here or there is fine. But with OMAD, honestly, you just need to calorie count until you hit your goal weight. And depending on how much weight you, you need to lose, most people need to lose, let's say if they're on a weight loss journey, this is gonna be like an extreme weight loss journey. Most people need to lose at least 100 pounds. Some people need to lose less, some people need, need to lose more. So I'll just say 100 in the middle. But to count calories consistently, to lose weight with OMAD and to get to 100 pounds down, that shouldn't take more than a year, I don't think. It should not, because OMAD is just that, just that good. Yeah, I you can do waist training on OMAD. It's not, it doesn't hurt at all. And OMAD is probably like, or fasting, doesn't matter what fasting routine you do in terms of intermittent fasting or what have you. But I think fasting period, and when I say intermittent fasting, at least OMAD, fasting for like 22 hours a day or more is probably the best way to shrink that waist. Fasting targets belly fat. People don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. It does. It's just been evidence in my weight loss journey when I would lose weight and I throw in fasts or do prolonged intermittent fasting via OMAD or do a dry fast or ADF, any of those versions of fasting, OMAD and above. So what I consider OMAD and above is OMAD, alternate day fasting, uh, dry fasting for longer than 24 hours and extended fasting for longer than 24 hours. That is what I mean by OMAD and above. Any of those methods, throwing it into your waist lo weight loss journey or waist loss journey, who doesn't want a snatched waist? I think everyone wants a snatched waist, especially as women. Um, throwing those in definitely helps you out with um, shrinking that waist for sure. All right, so tip number five or four. I think I switched it. Who? To guaranteed waist loss with OMAD, throw in a keto OMAD, throw in keto OMAD dates. Personally, I did it with keto OMAD through and through. I will forever already, uh, I will forever advocate keto OMAD. There goes my brain slipping up. Forever advocate it. I will forever. And I'm actually doing a keto OMAD tonight. I'm going to try to jump right back into it. Throw in keto OMAD dates. Why? Because keto OMAD just ramps up your metabolism. It switches things around. It helps, it keeps you in fat burning mode longer. You get ketones, so it's where your brain uses ketone. And why are you driving like that, you weirdo? Why are people weird? Like, honestly, I have anxiety around people. I'm in a parking lot, and now you have to come park beside me. That is fantastic. Oh, my goodness gracious. This city is crazy right now. It's the Calgary Stampede. And I didn't realize how big the stampede was. I thought the Calgary Stampede was just, you know, it was about a cowboy thing. It's not. Like, pit bulls here... This uh, this um, 
I don't know, singer called Ross is here. Like a whole bunch of people are here. Like a bunch of politicians are in town. I didn't realize how big it was. Like, it's really big. If I knew Pitbull was, Johnny Reed is performing every night and I love Johnny Reed. Um, he's Scottish, but Canadian, but lives in Tennessee. Um, I didn't realize how big it was. So this city feels like Toronto does on Caravana Weekend, but not as bad. Toronto's worse, <laughs> obviously. Apparently a million people come into the city. It's all lively. Like if I knew Pitbull was coming, I definitely would have bought tickets because I love Pitbull. But anyway, um, yeah, that, that person just scared me there because he was like driving into my car. <laughs> the next tip I want to talk about is... Um, so yeah, I said throwing keto OMAD days because it keeps you in uh, fat burning stage longer. Your brain switches from using ketones as energy and your body's able to utilize um, your fat and it crushes your hunger and it speeds up weight loss. Like I love it right now. I love it. So I'm definitely going to attempt a keto OMAD tonight. I had like, again, I've been struggling with it. Like I prefer to do keto OMAD, but with everything going on with my body, it's driving me absolutely insane. But I'm going to have a steak because every time, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but every time I consume steak, it takes my body like longer than usual to digest it. And I think that's because steak is full of vitamins. It's full of B vitamins too, which I take to help. B vitamins are good. I take vitamin B too. It helps to digest um, fats, carbs, and proteins better, but I take it mainly for headache issues. But every time I have steak, it sits on my stomach for like the longest time. So I'm definitely going to do a keto OMAD tonight. I'm going to have steak. I'm going to have eggs. I might throw in some beef liver. Um, I'm going to try to get nutrient-dense food so my body doesn't freak out. Other things that you want to add to your journey in terms of losing weight with OMAD is that you want to download apps. You want to make sure you're tracking everything. Have a method of seeing your progress day in and day out. Um, honestly, repetition is the best way to learn. I'm going to keep hammering this in my head. Number one thing I need to hammer in my head is to count my freaking calories. You know what? I'm going to do what I did from day one. I had a calendar. Get, I did have a calendar up and then I stopped utilizing it because I was just all over the place with my issues. But have a damn calendar. That calendar tracking, I've always been successful with it. And the reason why I've been so successful with calendar tracking, it's how I did it with when I got into routine with exercising. I know Beachbody or body, they have a bunch of printouts that you can use where you track everything and you would track your workouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, you're doing cardio this day, you're doing upper body that day. And just having that visual just keeps it like scheduled. When you have things scheduled, it's easier to stick to it. And I don't mean scheduled to a T just, you know, you don't have to have things scheduled by the hour minute by minute. I can't do that. I know the most successful people in the world schedule their like days in like one hour blocks or is it 15 minute blocks? That's what Elon Musk does, but I ain't no Elon Musk. But at least having a plan for the day, like jotting down like what your meal is gonna be. You can do this first thing in the morning, what your meals in, is gonna be. Visualize what you're gonna have for your meal. Visualize that you're gonna stick. That's what I did a lot in the beginning was visualization. I would do this meditation by Andrew Johnson on the Insight Timer app and he talks about visualizing yourself doing the habits that you need to do in order to get to your goals. So I would visualize myself every morning being like, okay, I'm going to eat 1200 calories today and I'm going to stick to keto. And how I'm going to do this is that I'm going to have, um, let's just throw out a random meal. I'm going to have some bacon. I'm going to have some steak. I'm going to have some riced cauliflower. I imagine myself eating that. And I imagine myself eating that at about seven o'clock PM. And then throughout the day, I imagine myself keeping myself busy, not getting, you know, not giving into temptation. Um, another method is to do if you, whatever you're struggling with, let's say you're struggling with breaking your fast early. Take some time in the morning and imagine yourself not breaking your fast early. Imagine yourself feeling the urge to go into that fridge or go on that app. Hopefully you're not doing that because apps are very expensive, but visualize yourself feeling all the feelings that you're feeling to like, you know, not stick to your routine. So let's say you're feeling those feelings inside. You're feeling like anxious. You're feeling like not well. Imagine yourself feeling that going to the fridge and then being like, 
I'm not going to do this today. I'm going to stick to my goal. Have a little mantra you, you can say. Maybe like, I am powerful, or I am enough, or I am worthy to refuse this. So I'm able to stick to my goal, or I am worthy of having self-delayed gratification. Like have that in your head. Imagine that in the morning. Imagine you doing that and then closing the fridge and walking away. So when that time does come in the evening, guess what happens? It's imprinted in your subconscious mind and there you go. You don't do it. That's how I got over binge eating. I really use that. That was through EMDR and following that meditation. Like meditation is very powerful. I should do a video on talking about weight loss meditation or losing weight via meditation. Like I should definitely do a video on that because honestly, weight loss is 100% a mindset thing. Your mind at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Sorry, I got to stop this car if we're ever going to get these doors fixed. All right. So my next tip is take your electrolytes throughout the day. That's what I need to do. Right now, I don't need electrolytes. It's so hot here. I'm so thirsty. It's absolutely wild. But make sure you're taking your electrolytes first thing in the morning and drinking tons of water throughout the day. Water is important on OMAD. Whether it be water in the form of zero calorie teas, please avoid all sweeteners because sweeteners will just increase your hunger. I don't know how I did it. Like there were some days when I first did OMAD, I had copious amounts of coffee because coffee is a great appetite suppressant. But um, coffee also ruins your gut health. I actually took a fat burner today, which is in the form of a green tea extract and um, green bean coffee through InnoSap. So you guys will be seeing a video drop in by them because I was just like frustrated with um, how my body's looking right now. Yeah, I'm struggling with that. I'm just frustrated because I'm comparing myself to when I was really lean, which was like a month ago. <laughs> I was lean at like when I was sitting in the low 170s and my stomach looked good. And now I'm just like not happy. I'm like, what did I do? But I was told to do that to help my body heal. But at the end of the day, I was still getting symptoms. So it is what it is. So I'm just gunning. I'm really pushing to hit a new low weight. I just want to kind of get to the 160s, even the 150s, stay there train hard, train like how I was training before, train hard so I can eat more and just like build muscle in like at a very lean weight. That's what I want to do. I'm going to get there. It's just going to take time. But yeah, what was my tip? Yeah, take your electrolytes and stay hydrated. Another thing is you want to have a weight log and this ties into this tip. Have a weight log and make sure that you are weighing yourself right before you break your fast daily. You want to weigh yourself right before you break your fast because it keeps the scale consistent. You do want to do daily weigh-ins because daily weigh-ins gives you the information you need in order to lose weight. If you're not losing weight or if you're on a weight loss journey and you're not weighing yourself daily, what are you doing? That is the number one data you need. You need to have the data to lose weight. Like, and that data for weight loss is the scale. Another form of data is taking pictures once a week or twice a week or not twice a week or every two weeks. Another form of data is taking inches. You can take inches all over your body, but the most important inch that matters is at the smaller circumference of your waist. That's where you want to take your inches on a weekly basis, I would say, because that will indicate fat loss. When you take your inches around your waist, that is um, at the smallest point of your waist. That is where it indicates fat loss the most. So you want to take your inches. That's another form of measurement keeping track of how your clothing's fitting, keeping track of your progress in the gym or your progress with, um, you know, mental progress. You want to keep track of your mental progress. Like how many days did you resist breaking off your diet? Like when I first started, I did that all the time. I would track the days I would mess up. That's so important. Keep track of the days you mess up. And then for one month, I messed up maybe six days. And then I would be like the next month, you know what? We're going to, we're not going to go more than four days of messing up. So keeping track of your mental progress in that way, how many days are you improving in terms of you um, maybe messing up your diet or messing up your routine? So it's important to just be aware of what you're doing because awareness is powerful. Weigh yourself daily, have a weight log, which is just listing your weight in one column and um, having your calories in the next column. And the weight log allows you to adjust your weight loss. You know, if you're looking at your calorie count and you're seeing that, hey, the weight's going up, 
bump your calories down by 100. Um, the weight log is going to give you so much information. You can use the weight log to gain weight. It's the same thing. Gain weight is the reverse. All you got to do is um, do the same thing. Record your calorie count. If the weight's dropping, increase your calories by 100. Um, the weight log is just so powerful because it tells you your maintenance calories. It tells you um, when you plateau, you get to know your body more. Um, you understand how your body responds to different forms of exercise. You're, you understand how your body responds to maybe lack of sleep or you did this this day and it was a very active day. Like having all of that knowledge is power on your weight loss journey. Because the reason why people fail is that they see the scale go up and then they don't understand why the scale's going up, even though they're counting their calories. Like, look at me, I'm in this situation. Well, the scale didn't go up for me. The scale's just not moving. Like for me, for example, I'm weight logging right now. I did OMAD perfectly for, for yesterday. And, what did, and I went to the gym and what did the scale do? It just stayed the same. It stayed the same. So I know there's a part of my brain that's freaking out right now, I know. But me having the info from the weight log and me understanding, hey, my cycle's supposed to start tomorrow, literally it's supposed to start tomorrow, then I know, okay, it's water weight from my cycle. Because normally when I do a perfect OMAD like that, I'm dropping three pounds. So, you know, it's just like the more knowledge you have, the more power you have over your journey. You're not going to be stuck in your emotions. You're not going to be stuck in the struggle. You're going to be like, okay, this is the reason why A, B, and C is happening. So that's like really important in terms of um, losing weight. Hi, this is 23-hour fasting Daniela coming at you here, or... OMAD Daniela coming at you here. I did a 23 hour OMAD fast instead of fasting for a longer time because I am doing my podcast tomorrow and I don't want to fast through that, especially considering I'm not going to be at home. I'm going to be at a restaurant. Things are going to be moving around. Anyway, that was a really good live stream. I just want to add something further to that. The importance of weighing yourself daily and adding that with taking pictures taking pictures is so important because pictures are going to tell you more than the weight you need to take the pictures and you need to coincide those picture taking or those progress photos with the scale so you understand that sometimes even when the scale's not moving you're still burning fat anyway if you made it this far to the video just type in the word burning fat because that's what we want to do and send you guys bad love take care bye